On this episode of Local Film Talk, we're talking to the people behind the web series Made to Order. To be the first to get this episode, subscribe to the Local Film Talk YouTube channel, or you can get the podcast by subscribing to our show on iTunes. Now let's get the show started, folks. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Local Film Talk. This is the show where we talk to people in the area who are working on different film and video productions, and we try to get some advice from them that maybe you can use for your own projects. I'm Bob Walters. And I'm Conrad Arnold. And uh, today we are talking with the people behind the web series Made to Order, uh, which has been screening at the West End Wine Bar Summer Film Series in Chapel Hill. Yeah, it's coming out uh, every week um, for for um, I guess uh, late uh, late June, early July. They got five episodes. Uh, episode four should be coming out right about now. And uh, our buddy Eric Pruitt, who helps me put on the West End Summer Film Series, was one of the writers on it. So we've snuck in a couple of the episodes before. But as part of our comedy block this Wednesday, we're actually going to be showing episode three. Um, which technically you could already see online, but come see it with an audience. It's always more fun to see stuff with an audience. See it on a screen with people with booze and popcorn. I mean, you could watch it. You could watch it on your phone, in your car, or at your cubicle, or in the bathroom stall. If that's what you really want to do, but watch it as the Lord intended. That just makes you a sad oh. loner. Yeah. Go out and be social. Make friends. Watch it on a screen mm-hmm. with other people. Wow, and and truthfully, the uh, the West End series has been getting bigger and bigger. I want to say when we first started out five weeks ago, we had maybe 25 people show up. And there's probably over 50 uh, for the last screening, maybe more. So, it uh, you know, the goal was to try to get, uh, you know, more and more people to show up. And it's been working so far. It's been a lot of fun. Sounds like it's too many people. Okay, everybody, watch all the episodes on your phone, in the bathroom. Don't, don't, don't come to the screen. Yeah. And don't tell us about it either. If you're going to watch TV on the toilet, we don't need to know about that. Me, I play Angry Birds, but you can do what you want. Man, Angry Birds, dude. That's so 2010. Oh, yeah. I'm behind the times. I'm old, man. I, I'm not up with the hip crowd. So uh, so what else we got? Um, well, we had a meetup last week, actually. Uh, yes, Triangle right. Filmmaking Community Meetup. Hells yeah, the Triangle Filmmaking Community Meetup. We are at uh, Rally Point and Cary. Uh, I lost track of how many people showed up. Probably was, a little more than 50, I think. It was uh, it was pretty crowded. It, it was a West End screening crowd uh, size. Right. Um, no, it was, it was a lot of people. Um, it was a good time. You know, uh, a, lot, a lot of, uh, I'd say probably about a third of the crowd that came out were, were new. And mm-hmm. I'd say, like, uh, there was another... Uh, amount of people that hadn't come out in quite a while so it was like they were you know reintegrating back into the community after after taking some time off to work on stuff and it was really cool man um i know i know a lot of people caught up with uh people they hadn't seen in a while uh surprise of new projects were taking flight out of there i just love our meetups man our our nice well, I mean, it's just all about people getting together and uh, and shooting the shit and having fun. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a particularly organized event. Everybody just comes and, uh, you know, sees what everybody's been working on and uh, chats each other up. And it's just a social mixer, but it's uh, I'm glad to see it growing. Well, I think I think I think part of the, the magic of it is that it is unorganized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't have to go in. We don't have to read minutes. We don't have to. I don't know what whatever like other groups do. We just we just meet up and and we it doesn't meet cost people. anything. People just show up. Uh, all all it costs you is your food and drink at the bar. Yeah, just, I mean a lot of people just have a good time, man. Yeah, uh, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, well, and on the plus side, we've actually gotten ahead of ourselves and planned all the way to like October. So we're not going to be worrying about any of that shit at the last minute. We've got it all planned out. So it'll be nice and smooth from here on out. Yeah. Uh, start getting the, the next ones up so more people have time to plan to come out. But, um, and yeah, Rally Point's and been working out pretty good. Carrie's a little more central for some of the folks in Durham and everything. Well, you know, um, I think we found a venue that, uh, 
works well with us, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, besides the fact that they got like, you know, they take care of us and they uh, they got some uh, good food and, and obviously some good beer. I, 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 even though we don't get money from Brewprint, I just want to throw out the plug to Brewprint since they're the featured brewery this month over there, and uh, they were really cool. You know, one of their guys was out there giving out beer samples. So uh, you know, nice. Yeah. So um, TFC meetups, we got them every month. Uh, if you miss this month's, uh, you suck, and you need yes. to make it up by making sure you come to the next one. Well, you know, and, and they're just really great low pressure kind of environments. You know, I, right. I probably get some people who show up; they're a little nervous, but there's no reason, man. No, no reason. We're all cool, folks. We're we're, we're not high strung. No. Some of us are, but you can go hang out with the uh, with the with the chill people. We're high strung on set, maybe, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there you go okay so what else we got coming up i uh, got me up again uh this rough cuts thing there's another episode or there's another uh, rough cut screening coming up that's right they're doing it every two months and this month it's going to be on july 25th uh 7 p.m mm -hmm. and this uh, is a good opportunity for people who are working on something but it's not quite finished you want to get a little feedback it's a safe environment where you can screen your project and uh, and have some people give you some honest feedback about what's working and what's not working, which mm -hmm. is really great because it is so hard to get honest feedback from people because if somebody doesn't care, the only people you're going to get to watch it are your friends and family because other people don't care. They're not going to take the time to watch it, and your friends and family don't want to hurt your feelings. So an opportunity to get honest feedback is uh, is really valuable around here. Yeah, and, and that's, that's part of, the, part of uh, what makes it work so well is that you're going to get feedback from complete strangers to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's all moderated, you know. Um, there, there's a guy who, who moderates it, does a great job. And, um, you know, I, I threw a couple of things in uh, last time. You know, I mean, these were finished, finished projects, so I wanted to see how people reacted to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting. It was really interesting, uh, some of the feedback that came uh, out of it. And um, so you can just I, imagine they're like, uh, well, maybe if you did this, maybe if you did that. And you said, well, it's a finished product. So deal with it. Well, no one told me to quit my day job, <laughs> quit my day job. So that's good. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, we're going to we're going to have a piece in there this month. You know, we're going to mm -hmm. that uh, that short film we were talking about shooting last week. We're going to see if we can get that in there and get a little feedback before we put a final cut online. So, so we are putting our money where our mouth is, and we suggest you guys do too. So, uh, so check out the the rough cut screenings. We'll see if we can get a, a link in the show notes. Uh, but you guys should definitely check that out. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, you know people who are interested in submitting should contact um, Connie DeGrazia over at the Carey Theater. Uh, okay, probably get their their film in there. There we go. Uh, next to last thing on the agenda is our next TFC screening. Uh, that's your department. I'll let you roll with that. That's July 21st, and we are doing local documentaries. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet what documentaries we're doing, but uh, it's, it's going to be still all putting local, that program together. All nonfiction. Yep. Nice. It's, it's going it's to be good because we want to see some real life. Right. Well, we were talking last week that documentaries, uh, you know, nonfiction stuff tends to bring out the crowd. So it'd be nice to, you know, again, local films by local people, um, you know, by topics they're interested in. Hopefully the uh, the crowd is interested in stuff that affects the area around them, too. And we get a nice turnout. Yeah. So uh, that, that's what's going on with, uh, with our screening this month, which, of course, will be the day after your july 20th screening so yeah uh, you know what i'll, I'll be sure stuff. to give that a plug you, you better yeah i know where you live yeah you do I'll, I'll make sure when i'm standing on that table yelling at people in the bar i will tell them to come to the screening good and uh, last but not least of course is film spark uh film yeah. spark Still taking submissions. We are. We are on Film Freeway taking submissions. Uh, so far, we've got a few dozen films in. Um, it's looking good so far. I think we're mm -hmm. a lot of good stuff too. We got a lot of really good shit this year. Yeah, yeah, we do. 
Uh, we got we got about eighteen hours of content in so far. Nice. So, that uh, means we can be choosy. We can be choosy. Yes. I love the opportunity to be picky. You know, it's uh, you know, when you just gotta you know scrounge around and find stuff to put out. Sometimes you're worried that the quality isn't always there. But mm -hmm. you know, I think I think the lineup of stuff that's been submitted this year, e even better than. Uh, then last year, I think we got some, you know, some really quality stuff, which is interesting because last year we were kind of taking anything, uh, but this year we have a, a cutoff, so it's only stuff within like the last year and a half. And the fact that it's all so high quality tells me that people are really stepping up their game around here. So I'm excited to show a bunch of this stuff. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be pretty cool, man. I'm looking forward to our second year of Film Spark. Yeah, and and showing some some great content to people. Very cool. Very cool. Well, that pretty much does it for the uh, past and upcoming events. Uh, you guys want any more information about that stuff, you can check out the show notes. Uh, but right now, uh, what do you say we go ahead and talk to our friends over at Made to Order? Let's do it. Do it. So let's go ahead and um, uh, I'll, I'll let you guys go around and uh, introduce yourselves. Uh, let's start with Eric. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell how you're related to the project. Hi there, my name is Eric Pruitt. I'm a screenwriter, author, and filmmaker living in Durham, North Carolina. We're currently in Dallas, Texas. Um, and I am one of the episode writers for Make It Work. Nice. Uh, you actually wrote season three, which we're going to be showing at the West End Summer Film Series this uh, later this week. Absolutely. Wednesday the 6th, uh, I've got episode three, which is titled Trap Queens. Uh, I'll be screening uh, in the block, the comedy block that's between 7 and 9 o'clock at the West End Wine Bar at 450 West Franklin Street in Chapel Hill. Y'all come mm. on down. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> Eric is, of course, my co-eyes organizer of the West End Summer Film Series. So the lesson here, folks, is nepotism works. It absolutely <laughs> works all the time. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. If I had a son, he'd be in charge of it. <laughs> Uh, okay, next let's go uh, Kendra, who is hiding hi. from us. Hi, yes, I'm hiding in, in, to get away from the noise. Um, hi, I'm Kendra Staub. Um, I play June, and I'm an executive producer, and um, fellow uh, Katie, Kevin, and I um, started the web series. Yeah, so, yeah. And you are, you are taking your time away from a raging party to talk to us. That's why you're hiding Absolutely. in a closet. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a party right here. This is, party. <laughs> this is an internet party. That's right. That's right. Coming That's coming right. to you all the way from the East Coast down to Dallas, Texas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on. Uh, and then we have Kevin and Katie. Hey, guys. Um, I'm Katie Carpenter with Mr. Yes, I'm Kevin. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, I created this puppy called Made to Order and uh, executive producer along with Kevin who keeps us on track um, and I also play Margo. Yeah and I uh, uh, was like the production manager, line producer, first AD, uh, kind of all rolled up into one um, and then also contributed to the story and, and helped produce and pretty much whatever was needed. Nice, and, jack of all trades. And Kevin also directed episode three, which is called Trap Queens, which will be screening at the West End Summer Film Series on Wednesday, July the 6th from 7 to nice. 9. Y'all come on down. <laughs> Y'all come on down now. We need to pay him for that either. Yeah, we're going to play a drinking game every time Eric plugs this episode. we got to take a drink. <laughs> Kevin's already drinking. So. Yeah, we got some kind Kevin, of disclaimer we're here. not responsible for death and stuff like that. Hey, uh, Bob, it's not showing on the YouTube page, buddy. It's not showing on the YouTube page. No. Well, it says we're now broadcasting. Now it's there. Now it's there. Okay. It took forever to show up. I've been reloading it. Oh, uh, okay. We good now? Maybe? Yeah, we're, we're, we're good now. You know, just okay. me to interrupt the show to say something. Okay. It's important. That, of, that, that of course, my humble co-host, Conrad Arnold, uh, who is uh, helping take care of the technical end, posting in uh, Triangle Film Community Facebook page and uh, online. So hopefully anybody watching live right now can go ahead and, uh, you know, ask us a couple questions, and we'll sh uh, be sure to send them out to you guys. Yes. Uh, and last but not least, we have... Um, 
Uh, Karen, Karen right? Another K. Yes, yes. Hi, I'm Karen. I'm one of the writers on Made to Order. I also do uh, some film work in Atlanta. I work as a prop master behind the scenes, and every once in a while I'll jump on stage and do a little bit of a stand-up comedy in Atlanta. Oh, no way. Yeah. Cool. I've always wanted to talk to somebody who did a little stand-up. It seems very, very hard, deceptively hard. Yeah, um, it, it is. I think the hardest thing... Oh, no, Karen! I would agree. I would agree with her 100%. The yeah. hardest thing. The hardest thing is when your webcam freezes on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just a bear. Oh, no, Karen. Yeah, Karen also directed uh, episode four coming yeah. out this week. Uh, releases Wednesday. Yep. So she directed that one. Okay, cool. She, she wrote it too. and directed it. Yeah. yeah. Pretty Very cool. awesome. So tell us a little bit about uh, Made to Order. I guess we'll start with Katie and Kevin, uh, since I believe this was all your idea, Katie. But tell us a little bit uh, how Made to Order came about, and then we'll see how all these other folks got involved. Oh, yeah. Roped in. Um, <laughs> I blackmailed all of them. Uh, no, so, uh, Made to Order got started as a... Uh, I, I'm a freelance actress, and work comes and goes, and I was frustrated, and so I would look at the ads on Craigslist, and I would see some stuff about maid cleaning services, like fantasy maid stuff, and I was like, you know, like I can maybe do that. I can maybe be down with that, possibly, if the money's right, and then I chickened out. I never did it. But I definitely thought about it, and uh, I also was frustrated because a lot of the roles that women get are like super one level, always relationship to a man, you know, like the girlfriend, the waitress, like just not really complex characters. And so I wanted to create something that was more women led, more dynamic. And um, I was working on some projects with Kendra at the time, and then Kevin is the guy you want to get anything done. You need him by your side. So uh, we kind of all got our heads together um, and we shot the pilot. We raised some money and then we hired Eric and Karen. And Eric I knew from Disengage. He wrote uh, a short film that I did. I knew he was awesome. And Karen, we put a call out for some and um, she answered and she sent some stand-up comedy and was like so hilarious that we were like, that would be like a great combo. Yeah. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> Oh, and nice. Made to Order is about a struggling actress who starts a cleaning business with her roommate. So, yeah, loosely based on my life, we meet all kinds of crazy characters. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the season so far. we got two more episodes to go. So it's, uh, it's five episodes this season, uh, plus you had the pilot, which doesn't count as part of the season? Right. That was, um, we, we matured a lot, we'd like to say, since the writing and filming of the pilot. It, it, it was an awesome experience, um, but we just kind of took things up a notch uh, for, for this season, and we wanted to push the boundaries a little bit. And it's the internet, so, like, there are no rules. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and the production value went up quite a bit, too. It's, uh, it's a really good-looking show. Thanks. Yeah, Tony, Tony Collins saw to that. He's, He's master awesome. DP editor. Uh, based in Greensboro, mm -hmm. and hopefully we can steal him down here to Atlanta. We're trying our hardest. Yeah. He said he's thinking about it. He said he'll be homeless here in like three weeks. So That's great. Great. Yeah. We'll, we'll pray on him. That's a great <laughs> excuse to move. <laughs> yeah. We're exploiting we are exploiting homelessness for humor here on this show today. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Homos are funny. Homos are damn funny. <laughs> So, by show of hands, uh, who has worked on a web series before? Um, I so I hope Kendra is raising her hand. I have, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Kendra, I can't. I can't little closer. Um, I actually did. <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> you were saying, Katie? Yeah, I did um, Door to Door in Charlotte uh, last year. They did, like, 20 episodes. They were really great. Um, Justin Smith and some people. They were awesome. Okay. It was fun, but that was the first one and only one I did. So I what's had a recurring the... character in Frequency, like three episodes or something in Frequency. That's it. That's right. You were involved in Frequency for um, uh, KV Works. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I couldn't tell, uh, Kendra, did you say you, you have worked on web series before? 
Yeah, I worked on one called One and Done, which was, like, a comedic web series about this guy that goes on dates with all these, like, crazy women. Um, and then, but that one, I don't know. What he Were you was. one of the women? Were you one of the crazy women? Yeah, and, like, I, and he thought I was super cool, and everything's, like, really great the whole day, and you think she's, like, really perfect and fun. And then she has, like, this weird superhero fetish, and she's, like, a dominatrix. Um, <laughs> what? So, yeah. what? Where is this? I want to see it. Okay. <laughs> I like this. We've got to check all these out. Oh yeah. So uh, so it sounds like uh, quite a few of you guys have some have some web series experience. What um what's different in your experience from those shows with this one and like what were some of the lessons you took from the old shows that you did to try to make uh, made to order better? Great question. Um, yeah. I, I think all of us involved just really wanted to keep the production quality level high. Because with web series, you know, like it, it's a lot, it's usually a bunch of friends who get together with a camera, maybe like a boom, and they just film stuff. But we wanted to kind of mimic like a TV show. I would say, you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, I think just keeping keeping the story, and then also pushing the the boundaries. Like I said, you know, we just didn't want it to be boring, like. We wanted people to actually watch it. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you got, uh, you, you know, you're on YouTube. It's out there on the internet. There's really not many rules. I mean, sh you know, Google has a few weird ones, and you can get flagged for things if you piss somebody off. But, you know, uh, you know from the three episodes I've seen so far, we got some sexy. We've got uh, some drugs, some swearing, and everything. I mean, it's kind of, you know, anything goes, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely T TVMA. <laughs> <laughs> we had kids in it. We were like, maybe just ask your parents. We let them. We let them. I sent them the script. They knew what's up. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So um, I, I, I assume everybody we're talking to right now, it looks like uh, Karen got booted off. Hopefully no. she comes she's back. Not she's not mom. Mom. She, yeah. she said she was visiting. Me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, but uh, so it sounds like uh, all four of you guys have some uh, writing credits on this show, right? No, I don't no? have any writing credits. No. Uh, I thought you. I thought I saw you uh, at well, least with uh, some, a story credit. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Oh yeah. Character collaborate totally. Yeah. yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. We have so so. What's it like writing over a longer arc? And I guess uh, you know specifically for Eric. You weren't part of the whole thing. You came in and wrote, what was it, two episodes? Uh, two, two and a half. Two and, two and, a, half. and a half. Mm -hmm. So what's it like when, you know, there's a larger story and you get brought in to write a part of it? Oh, I mean, it was, a, it was a privilege because, you know, I was a supporter of the project initially because I had worked with Katie. So automatically that means, oh, hey, this is going to be great. But she showed me a uh, very rough version of the pilot and it was just, it was one of the, the few things that just had me like spitting my drink all over the laptop. I was I was really laughing at some of the the things in there. So my number one concern was I didn't want to mess up. You know, she's got her she she had a specific brand of humor and tone that she was going for that I was afraid to tinker with because I thought unadulterated and untouched it was great on its own. But um, she was really really her and Kevin both were really really patient with um, with us helping us get the right kind of mood, and then the scripts we turn in to talk about, you know, bringing it to where they wanted it to be for that major order brand. So it was a fun, it was a really, really fun process. It helped me kind of stretch some of the things that I normally do. So I had, I had a blast. And and the best part, they pay. They pay. They paid fast. Before the, before the episodes were even finished, PayPal account was, was credited. So, that's, <laughs> uh, so anybody that uh, respects the writer as much as they have is uh, aces in my book. Good job, guys. Wow, I Conrad, we found somebody who got paid uh, for work on YouTube. <laughs> Holy crap! Everybody it's a wants Christmas stuff. miracle. Yeah, we, we actors included. We did. We paid. It wasn't a lot, but we paid. We wanted. Yeah, to it, was, it was. It was huge. It was huge. So that was oh, great. We appreciate. And I pride ourselves in the food as well. Our craft services. Oh yeah. Oh, Kendra and Katie. 
There was not a single hungry soul on our set. No. We had all the food for our production. Every, every night. night we would. Kendra is a beast in Costco. You should all go shopping with her. She's great. <laughs> so, so you guys were respectful enough of your cast and crew to not just order Papa John's all the time. Oh Home cooked meals every day. Uh -uh. Right. Except for we, we did a pizza one time for episode three just because where we were. Oh, like, oh, we needed pizza. <laughs> like, it made sense. <laughs> No disrespect to Papa John's, but, you know, if they want to say something nice, awesome. they can pay us for ad time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, we, uh, we put in a lot of our own, we raised some money, and Kendra, Kevin, and I all put in some of our money. Because, again, we, it's an investment. We wanted mm -hmm. to, to make something we were all proud of, and we all cared enough to, to do that financially. So Yeah, and it's right. just, no one has to work for free. Like, you can, you know, even if it's a passion project, like, you can still pay people gas money or something. I mean, that's just... As someone who we all work full time in this industry, most of us do, and like, you know, you, you got to stand by that principle. Okay. Yeah. Well, and a lot of the crew that we talked to, you know, we kept saying, "Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. We wish we could pay you more. We wish you could pay you more." And they said, "You guys are already paying us more than most people would for a project like this. One and two, the material we're gonna get from this is so rewarding in itself that we didn't, we we would have done it without pay." But pay was important because you want to at least show, like, okay, we're going to give you as much as you can. But that was really rewarding to hear, like, all the crew and cast saying, like, no, just the footage in itself. We already know that this is going to be so good that that's, that's pay in itself. And then on top of that. So that, that was kind of really cool to hear, you oh, know. Nice. You, that's what you want to hear. Well, it's interesting because I know you guys had a, uh, it was a Kickstarter or Indiegogo? Kickstarter. You did a Kickstarter. Um, but, you know, like you say, in addition, you put up some of the money yourselves, and that's, you know, one thing you always hear uh, people say is that, what, you know, why should, uh, you know, people go on to Kickstarter and Indiegogo and platforms like that hat in hand, um, but, you know, why should somebody else invest in you if you're not investing in your project, too? So to see you guys right. put, uh, great. Yeah. Absolutely. investing yourselves is really great. Mm-hmm. So talk a little bit about the uh, the fundraising campaign because um, you know again a lot of these a lot of people go to these platforms um, they may not have any kind of proof of concept footage shot or anything they might just say mm -hmm. they have a script and they sit down and they do a video um, but when it comes to uh, crowdfunding you kind of already have to have uh, a product or an audience or you know you, you need to have people you can go ahead and mobilize so had did you guys have like your various networks did you try to mobilize them to help raise the money yeah I mean it was like totally a learning experience and literally turned into like my day job for a month Kevin knows I was like I was I was pretty miserable mostly because I you know, I cared so much, and I cared about everyone who put in so much work um, to make that pilot, and so I just really want it to be successful. Um, but yeah, I, I was reading, and it was saying, like, your success is often equivalent to the number of Facebook friends you have, and I thought that was wild. I was like, okay, but that's what it is. It's connections. Like, a stranger is way less likely to give you money than somebody who knew you in the fourth grade, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it really is. It really is how much you know, how many people you know, um, and who you know, and then yeah, creating a product that people can jump on board and see some some sort of potential. So I don't think it's fair for you to just say like we're raising money for this movie or whatever and not show any sample of that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that people that like it's like shopping in a store and you don't see what you're about to buy, but they just give you a bag and they're like, it's going to be great, I promise. <laughs> right. Well, I was listening to a podcast. I think it was the Indie Film Hustle podcast. Um, I was listening to some back episodes, and one of the things um, that one of their guests was saying was, you know, it's it is all about your friends uh, you, you, or like your your broader group of friends and your larger network of people you can reach because if the you know, if the only people that are going to end up donating to your Kickstarter or your fundraising campaign are your immediate friends and family, well, you might as well have just gone around and asked your friends and family for money and not given 10% of it to Kickstarter. Right. It's you know, so the ability to go out there and reach people is really important. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, I think even now, if we had gone again, it would be it, it would be even more successful. Like, a lot of it was because of our friends and family that really helped us out. Um, but now I think that we've attracted a, a wider audience, and we've learned, we've been diligent about posting on social media and, and gaining that kind of following. So I think 
yeah, you, you have to be patient, which is something I struggle with, but in, in building, because things take time to build. Um, but yeah, do your groundwork and really, really kind of plan things out. So don't just decide to do something and say, we're doing a Kickstarter campaign in two weeks, boom, like it's happening. You know, you should right. think about it like four months at least ahead of time to kind of do the things to, to get you there. Mm -hmm. Well, just like the production of the show, you know, pre-production is everything. So making sure you plan everything out ahead of time is key. Uh, thank you for coming back, Karen. Yeah, I was having some technical difficulties. I had to restart my computer. Uh, uh, it's okay. I, I, I'm I'm glad you're trying. It's it's you know we we really want to be able to uh, ask some questions of you. Uh, so so go ahead and tell us a little bit about uh, at what stage you got involved and what your role's been so far. Um, I saw Katie had posted on Facebook um, a little call out looking for writers, and I contacted her on there and. Um, she just asked for a writing sample, you know, I just kind of, I watched the pilot and just sort of came up with my own sort of, I guess, spec script for Made to Order, and then she read it, and I presume Kevin and Kendra also read it, and then she asked me to come on board, and I told her I'd be happy to and was excited to. So um, Eric and I share the writing responsibilities. We each wrote two, and then he and I uh, co-wrote the finale together, which, you know, I, I love working with Eric. I think we make kind of a great writing team. Yeah. Oh no no! I love working with her too. Is <laughs> <laughs> this you guys' first time working together? Yeah. Mhm. Mm okay. So um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not uh, familiar with uh with you, Karen. I, I don't know you personally, but uh, Eric is a friend. Uh, to to my knowledge, you don't have a lot of co-writing credits, Eric. You usually work kind of solo. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, what's um, what was it like collaborating? Oh, it was great. Um, it was for me. It was e it was really really easy. It was like riding in a Cadillac because uh, on the on the episode that we share, I said, "Hey, I'm just gonna throw a whole bunch of shit on a piece of paper." And Karen, will you please make it good? And uh, and she totally did. So we had some fun. We had some fun stuff in there. Some uh, some crazy some crazy uh, little things that she ended up making me look smart. So well, I, I, think that, I think that credit's a little unbalanced. I didn't have much tweaking I had to do. So, you know, it's like you gave me a Rembrandt, and I came in and dotted a couple things and said, here, there you go, I'm done. <laughs> one thing we were able to pull off is I think that one is the one where we got them just the cool, we got, we got them just the craziest. I yeah. Don't wanna, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but, yeah, those are, <laughs> I think they end up in two different attires. Neither one I thought we would get away with. And, uh, <laughs> And it's done. <laughs> it's done. Yes. That's episode five, ladies and gentlemen. Break the internet. <laughs> You're gonna end end on a bang. I like it. Oh, and I will say, um, so other than Eric, who would have if he would have been in Georgia, everyone on this call directed an episode. So that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Wow. Okay. And Eric, we we missed you, buddy. You would have been. You been. I would love to hang out on that set. Season two. <laughs> Season, Season two. two. Up there. <laughs> So, um, so we're, we, uh, so, um, Karen and Eric actually did the script writing, but I'm guessing Katie and Kendra, you guys did a lot of, and, and Kevin, you guys did a lot of breaking the stories. Um, how much of what we see in the episodes was, um, uh, part of the story and written in the scripts, and how much of it did you guys or the other actors ad lib? Great question. Yeah, Kendra, you go. Um, well, we like that's what Katie and I talked about. The the writing was so great, but what was also so great is that um we told actors this that we were open to improv because we think that sometimes that's the most organic and you honestly get some of the best moments. So pretty much using the script, but like we did oh, a no. lot of ad libbing too. We added a lot of you use that as your basis, and then you ad lib a bunch. And um, you just use the material and work off of that. And um, when you have a great script, it's really easy to do that. So, um, yeah, we added things and we kind of took the writing and make sure that we were honoring our characters and really, like, you know, so our characters make sense and that they, they you, show, you see their arc as they're changing because, you know, um, June and Margot, you'll see that they kind of switch. If you watch the first episode and the last episode, you're going to see that, there's definitely a shifting in both their attitudes towards the job and towards, 
you know, just life in general. So that that's kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, we just use the script and then we would, add, you know, improv a little bit, but. Our sets were so fun, yeah. Like Kendra said, like the actors and, and us, we just had such a great time because it was such a collaborative environment. Like the writers gave us such great material and then we got awesome actors and like we would just bounce bounce off of each other, you know. It was it was pretty fun. And everyone would suggest things, um, which was great that we were an open place for that. So, so tell me a little bit about uh, comedy, because uh, Conrad and I were actually working on a comedy short last week, and we were discussing the art of comedy and just how freaking difficult it is. Yeah. Um, you know, d d uh, how, how much experience do you guys have with comedy, and what have you found is the trick to uh, uh, making something funny? Good writers. <laughs> yeah, that's a start. Let's see. <laughs> I had some funny people to write it. Yeah, uh, writing and, and timing. I mean, it's mm -hmm. I have like a musical background, um, and a lot of it really is feeling the beat of, of the scene and um, tuning in with the other moving pieces, whether it's other actors or, or, or characters, you know, um, tuning in with them and, and feeling it. And um, I did improv in college, which helped a lot, just having that that backbone knowing that you can just pull something out at any time that can just, you know, add to it or not, just mm -hmm. go with your instincts. That helped a lot too, but um, people were saying, you know, like comedy is hard and they were surprised, like even the crew, our friends, were surprised with like how funny the scripts and like all of us were, and I was like, wow, guys. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. the next time when you're watching dailies at the end of the day and the whole crew is around the laptop laughing. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 And a lot of times, you know, obviously you have funny lines and funny actions and everything, but a lot of humor can also come in reaction shots and just whatever the other people in the frame are doing. You know, while Katie's saying a line, if Kendra is making a, a funny face you know, in reaction to it, that can be, uh, you know, that can make or break a scene, too. So how do you guys deal with Editing. that kind of stuff that probably wasn't in the script? Coverage. <laughs> this is Kevin. Kevin, it's your time to shine. That's <laughs> I was going to ask you, so yeah. how do you how do you shoot comedy uh, to get effective coverage and make sure you get the, the best angle on all the gags? Well, like, so I assist and direct a lot, and, and I get to work with a lot of directors, and it's setting up coverage is what it is, comedy, drama, horror, whatever. You're still just setting up coverage. So you want to make sure that you have some kind of master taken care of, and then you want to make sure you get a few shots going one way, flip the world, get a few shots going the other way, and then at that point you should notice some funny inserts to punch in on. Mm -hmm. okay. That great scene, then you're, you're going to... Okay yeah, it's pretty technical when you break it down. Yeah. Was there any one scene in particular that you really, um, like you found getting some of that extra coverage really uh, really saved the scene? Like just the regular like close-ups and master shot weren't quite getting all the flavor of it? I can think of it in the second episode um, that Karen wrote, Stranger Danger, Kendra was there too, she remembers this, uh, the the boys <laughs> were doing this mm -hmm. funny thing that wasn't in the script, it was Lil Boo, who's this robber, who's like this ghetto like robber, um, and my date, who claims he was a doctor, like he throws him on the ground because he thinks he's the owner of this house and wants his money, but Lil Boo hurt his back and so he can't get up, and so my date, who again claims he's a doctor but really isn't, is said, said like, here, I'm a doctor, can I help you with that? And like, then they go into this like massage trade, and I was like, what the fuck is happening? Like, let's go do that. Can we swear? Are we allowed to swear? I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah, go cool. for it. This is, this is YouTube. You know the rules on YouTube, but mostly there are none. Okay. Yeah, this is so great. I didn't think I would be the one to break it. Wow. <laughs> no, by all means. I hate having to go back and try to remember if somebody swore. So if you want to go ahead and get it out of the way, then I can just put the explicit tag on it and be done with it. Fuck oh, shit. Oh. For fucks. <laughs> Great. But yeah, that uh, trap queen scene. Oh like yeah. We were shooting almost the whole thing in one room, which sounds easy, but it's not. Mm -mm. Like, it's hard to shoot in one room, especially with a lot of actors. But that one, we, you know. Like I right, said, Trap Queen probably, has like twelve people in it, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, we had a lot of a lot of extra showed up, and they were all awesome. Oh, hey. That was, that was the other funny fun thing too about writing for this thing is that Kevin and Katie did say, "Dude, just go for it." 
Like, try to challenge us. If you need SEAL Team 6 busted into the room, go ahead and write it in. We can do that. And so, you know, normally I think if I was just doing something with my buddies, the the casting, the amount of people, you know, this some of that would have been a challenge. But they, yeah, they not they weren't afraid of that. They were like, dude, just give us a challenge. Uh, Karen, was there anything that you uh, uh, you wrote or were thinking about writing that you're like, man, there's no way they're going to go for this, and then they ended up uh, put, keeping it in there? No, I mean, when they opened that invitation of just go for it, I mean, I just, I did. I mean, I just opened it up, and I, you know, I think they did a great job with it, and all the actors did a great job with it, and it was just really pleasantly surprised to see them take it to the next level with the ad lib and just the organic chemistry that came on set. I mean, they did, aside from acting, and they did an excellent job in casting, and there was just some great chemistry on set. I mean, just in the one episode of mine that's aired so far, just seeing some of the things happen that I didn't write was like, this is bananas, this is really great, you know, so I really can't wait to see, you know, what happens in these last two episodes. So, I'm, I'm, you know, obviously you guys didn't have a lot of money, but you got a lot of production value out of it. So talk, talk a little bit, uh, uh, Kevin, I guess this one's for you, about... Uh, making it look like such a high-end production. What kind of stuff did you shoot on, and what were some tricks you used to uh, to make it look like a bigger budget production than it was? And how'd you get some of those really uh, really nice locations? Um, yeah, so we're in Atlanta, which is it's a it's a good place to shoot, um, especially location-wise. It's awesome. So yeah, I, I put an ad out on Craigslist for locations, and anyone that's seen the series, the the first two episodes. Uh, both those houses were actually owned by the same guy in the house that next door to each other. So, oh, wow. like, for production, that's a win. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Right. You know, we went with those, and then, you know, we made everything else work. Um, we shot, too, we shot right? on a Sony FS7. Uh, again, Tony Collins came down from North Carolina. And, you know, we had a, a pretty small grip and electric package, but it was enough to make it work. And, and Tony just had such a good understanding of... Um, color and composition and just knowing what you need in post-production and, and knowing how to exploit post-production. So he, he could take a scene and, and, and light it with you know two or three lights, small lights, and he knows his camera really well, and then you get an episode and you're just like, holy crap, you know, that looks Wait, like it could be on a network. Nice. And then sound, not skimping on sound either. We had an awesome mm -hmm. sound mixer, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Paris, who will drive you crazy on set just because he wants to get the best audio ever. Even if it's a silent room, he will, he will, you know, hold up. Let's get this as best we can, which I love. He's you know, so good. I, I want my crew to be thinking that way. Um, right. Just calling in a lot of favors with these guys and, and getting them to work for reduced rates, and uh, you get people that know what they're doing, and it, it can't help but look good. We have Colt and Terrence and Mike and uh, Z. We had a crew of six. Yeah. <laughs> so. okay. um, That's yeah. pretty good. Well, listen, it's uh, it's a little after 8.30. I know, Kevin and Katie, you guys got to head out. Yes, yeah, 4th fourth, fourth of July festivities back in. and, and uh, Yeah, if you saw me just a second ago take my headphones out, I started hearing this crackling noise. I'm like, what the hell is that? And I pulled it out, and the kids next door are setting off fireworks. So <laughs> it has begun. Yes. Um, so, yeah, did you guys have any parting thoughts, or uh, you want to plug where people can find you on social media? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, we have two more episodes coming out. The next one is Wednesday at 9, strictly on YouTube. Um, we're really encouraging people to subscribe so you don't miss out because we might post some funny videos. Um, it's Made to Order the Series. You can also like our Facebook page, Made to Order the Series. Um, and our last episode is next Wednesday at 9, and it's Crazy Finale written by Karen and Eric, uh, directed by Kendra, and it's it's awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Now like to, you know, anyone trying to do their own project, or whether it be a web series or really anything uh, that's, that's video or audio or any kind of media, um, you know, we love collaboration and sure. you can find our contact info. And if you're mm -hmm. hearing this or seeing the series, if, if you wanted to personally reach out, uh, we're always open oh, to, yeah. uh, you know, talking to people, and, you know, whether it's helping them out with questions they have or, or collaborating or whatever. So, yeah, thank you for your support. Awesome. Yeah, no, glad to talk to you guys, and, uh, you know, glad to do anything we can. Uh, Eric, uh, we wouldn't be happy to be screening any of those episodes, would we? Uh, I know I know for a fact that, uh, that's a good question, Bob, 
We are screening episode three uh, this coming Wednesday, July the 6th from 7 to 9 at the West End Summer Film Series at 450 West Franklin Street in Chapel Hill. Y'all come on out 7 to 9. We're going to have drink specials. We're going to have a Q&A. We're going to have a uh, popper from Mad Popper Popcorn. It's going to be better than any hoedown or anything you might see at a state fair for quite a while. So why don't y'all jump on in and uh, hang with us. That's at the West End Summer Film Series, July 6th. Screen and screen and episode three, Trap Queens. Stick around after nine. We'll throw on episode four because we got the screen down. It'll Woo! be a good time. Come on yeah. down. That's that's bonus content Eric's throwing in for you guys. Yeah. We have, to, we have social media social media plug here. If you if you uh, put anything made to order related on in your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, Snap. Uh, well, I don't know about how we, we'll do it on Snap, but we repost people. So if you're putting anything like on your own made to order it could be reposted on our page and uh sometimes katie and i like to send out gift cards or little things like that to support so, that's sweet um, so follow us on our social media accounts because you, you never know you might get cool publicity. yeah well thank you katie and kevin for uh for chatting with us uh we'll let you guys go but uh yeah you guys take care and we're looking forward to showing uh, episode three this one hey! thank you guys thank you guys it was a pleasure we really enjoyed it all right enjoy your holiday okay. thank you, you bye too. guys no, bye happy independence bye. day <laughs> <laughs> okay bye right then, katie. bye bye Lyra. So, uh, so with our remaining guests, we still have Karen, we still have Kendra, we still have Eric, and uh, I think Conrad's with us. Conrad is being quiet in the corner. There's a lot of people talking. I'm just going to be there doing me. Uh, Conrad is doing Conrad. Conrad's doing Conrad. So I don't want I don't want to hog the show, man. Uh, did you have any any questions you wanted to throw in there? Uh, my my main uh curiosity was about uh, how quickly an episode was produced and uh, what kind of turnaround uh, between production finishing and getting it ready for YouTube like uh, so how long did an episode take to shoot how long did an episode take to edit and uh, you know yeah yeah what did you guys think of this anyways so on top of that I'm also curious about like uh, putting out an episode every week instead of like some people are doing now uh, where they just put all the episodes out at one time. Yes. Great question. Great question. Um, so we actually, we set down five days. So it's an episode a day. So we had five episodes. So we shot them within five days. Um, and uh, about like, we have like a week and a half turnaround for each one. So that includes like editing and then sending it to the composer. Well, the first one we had about two and a half weeks, but then we're trying to get the edit out and we try and get it to the composers a week in advance. So our editor has very, very limited time, but she's phenomenal. Gabby, she's been doing such a great job because editing can make a break. You can have phenomenal actors, phenomenal writers, you know, great crew, but if you don't have a good editor, then that can ruin your whole project. Um, so very quick, and that was that was the goal we wanted. That's why they're so short too, because we said, okay, for the the first season, we need you know one viewers nowadays. They don't have a long attention span. You know, people aren't wanting to watch YouTube videos over 15 minutes, like tops. You know, um, yeah. and and we did talk about packaging, kind of like I know how Adult Swim does that, where it'll do like a bunch of like small little um, uh, episodes all together, back to back, and. Um, it just was an executive decision to do, uh, you know, an episode a week. Mm -hmm. But with two, I don't know. We're always uh, hearing what the viewers think and what they prefer. Um, but that was just just the decision we made. Okay. Did, have you found that that gives you an opportunity to build up some steam over the week for the next episode? Yeah, that's what we're hoping. I mean, especially with the way that like um, that. Like Kevin had, you know, with he's so phenomenal um, behind the scenes and really orchestrating all all of that. Um, he, that was the best way to be able to get an get a, an episode edited um, and then um, put the music in. Otherwise, it would have taken us much longer. Like we wouldn't have even released the first episode yet because we still aren't even done with episode five. You know, it's still oh, wow. we're still um, fine tuning that editing and the composing. So if we had released them all at the same time, we wouldn't probably have we we wouldn't have had the first one wouldn't even be released yet. So the way it was structured was that, um, well, once released, we 
to be editing and working on the next and then the next. So that's just how we had structured it because um, we wanted to keep the hype up. That, that was mainly the main main thing, keep the hype up. And all the people that donated, you know, they're like, okay, well, where's the episodes? You know, I, I put in money. I want to see the episodes. <laughs> so you want to be quick. But, you know, it takes time. So um, we, I'd say we've been really, really good on time in a short amount of time. But, yeah. All right. Now, I know you guys have already uh, shot all the episodes, but since you're still, you know, a couple episodes have come out and you're still working on the last couple, um, did that give you any opportunity to kind of be reactionary, you know, to see how people reacted to episode, like episodes one and two and make some tweaks to four and five to uh, pump up the stuff that people were responding to? Yeah, that's a great question. The episodes are just all so different from each other that we got responses. There was a lot of positive responses, and, um, you know, we love, I mean, critique is always good because you want to be the best you can be, and so we're very open to that. But um, I would say that, no, it was kind of already so structured on how it was going to be done that um, I don't think that we really changed that much with the editing or the composing um, in regards to uh, responses we've got because we just didn't get enough critique in that way to change the way we were doing it. So we just continue doing it the way we've been doing it, if that makes sense. Right. I'm amazed you shot up five episodes in five days. That's crazy. Right. Yeah, we just we just, we just just uh, decided, you know, back to back, we're just going to shoot five give ourselves block out five days actually we gave ourselves a week so we would have you know time to prep um before and then dump things on hard drives and you know how all that goes um so yeah yeah we were exhausted and you know especially being like cast and crew it was hard because when you're an actor you're you you're in one mindset when you're in a crew you're in another mindset so jumping back and forth was you know at the end of, i was really sick um by the the second day i was already really sick because i'd already come from working uh two weeks straight on an, on another film. So, um, but you know, it's so, it was worth being sick because it's so rewarding because you learn so much when you, when you're on both sides of the camera and you have so much respect for every single person because everyone works so hard and crew does not get enough credit. Crew does not get enough credit. Writers do not get enough credit. Like they're the reason that actors are able to do what they do. So definitely get a good crew and, and, and you'll be good. <laughs> Very cool. So I, I'm curious, uh, real quick with uh, Eric and Karen, uh, you know, like they were saying earlier, Eric, you didn't actually go down to Georgia. So oh, how yes. long did you guys have Friday? And I assume you did all your collaborations uh, online. How, uh, how was that, uh, working but not meeting in person? Um, it was fine. We did a lot of Google chat. You know, we try to meet once a week, you know, collectively to discuss ideas and progress of scripts. Um, and then with the final one where Eric and I collaborated, we just emailed back and forth. I mean, we both have, you know, very busy full schedules, so it was just hard for us to chat on the phone or even Google chat at that point because I know he had some uh, personal work as far as, you know, his writing was going and, um, you know, I, I work in film production as my day job, which, you know, I spend 12 to 14 hours a day on set, so email really was the best way, and he and I just, you know, jive so well that it was just easy for us to email back and forth. Yeah, it's cool working with a pro because, you know, when we said, hey, let's meet at 7 o'clock, you know, she's there at 6.58. Um, if we said, hey, let's have, a, uh, let's have this turned into each other by noon on email, you know, it's not 12:30, and you're like, well, "Go check your spam folder." You know, it was, uh, it was, it was really, really refreshing. So I love working with Karen, and I can't wait to the next to work on. Uh, awesome, very cool. Well, we've been going for about 45 minutes. I don't want to keep you guys for too long. Uh, did you have any other questions, Conrad? No, no. I mean, since since you and I have done. Web series before my, my I was really curious about that turnaround. Five episodes back to back is right. We wrote those episodes in March, mm -hmm. uh, and even I was blown away. You know, Katie ran that. Uh, I think she started the Kickstarter campaign in January, and in March approached us, and we had the scripts turned around. And the next thing you know, I think it was what like May or something. Yeah. We're watching. I'm watching the the uh, production. 
uh, things happen on Facebook, you know, they're posting, and next thing you know, they're po they're posting episodes in June. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was that. I mean, I'm I'm beyond impressed with what uh, with what I left myself into being involved in. So they did, they've done a great job and, and created a really really good project project okay. in an un unheard of amount of time, in my opinion. Nice. Nice. We started. I would. We 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 started the Kickstarter. Katie and I worked on that. Started back in November, actually, coming up with you know prizes and figuring out because you want to do a lot of research. And there's actually times uh, for people that are starting their own project. There's a lot of research you can do on it, and I don't mind sending all the notes that I took. Um, but there's like certain times you want to release, like during holidays are good, and you can ask family and friends to give that instead of like a present. Um, and like Thanksgiving, people are usually a little bit more giving. And then there's also like for how many days you put your you put the the funding for can affect it. So there's lots of like you know business numbers and things that go into it. So that's huge. So that was all put together in like November and then released. Um, later in January. So there was like some a lot of work put in before everything was released, but then once it was released, everything just went. It just went full force. Nice. So. There you go, the importance of pre-production. It's impressive, man. It's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think you guys did a great job. The three, well, I guess technically four episodes I've seen so far. So what's the pilot? Pilot is episode zero? <laughs> yeah, it was just, it honestly was for the kick, for like we to you talking about like, you know, you have to have like a product. We felt that it's important that you see, okay, this is kind of what the humor is going to be. This is who the two, the, the characters are, who, June and Margo. This is what the characters are going to be. Right. So kind of just giving people, okay, you need, this is kind of what you're donating to because we thought that that was important. So that's what it was more for. It was promotional and to show people, okay, this is what you're, you're helping, helping us helping us with. Nice. Well, I think it turned out great, and I can't wait to see the last two episodes. So um, so thank you guys for coming on the show. It's been great chatting with you. I'm sorry, you know, we had we had five people on. That might be a new record. <laughs> awesome. I think I had five people on once before, but I didn't have a co-host on then, so we have a new record now. What, what, Paul Bears? What, what oh, the parties. Paul Bears, I think we had four guests for that one. Was it well, fun? Thank you for having us. I appreciate oh, I think, it. I think it was. I think it was for. Yeah. yeah. So I have to go back and look. But uh, well, yeah, this but... this was a little chaotic. So I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to ask each person more questions and dig deeper oh, into your part. But uh, uh, thank you guys all for uh, for taking the time to chat with us. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having us on. We appreciate it. Real quick, uh, let's start. Uh, let's go, Eric, Kendra, and then Karen. Uh, tell us uh, where people can find more of your work. Okay. Um, well, I'm at ericpruitt.com, which is E-R-Y-K-P-R-U-I-T-T.com. Uh, I've got a novel, Dirtbags, a novel, Hashtag. Both of them are available at Amazon or hopefully your local bookstore. And I've got a few short films that are sprinkled around currently. Um, Keepsake is winning. It just got accepted into a New York Film Festival. It's winning the awards directed by Meredith Sousey. And if you're really, really curious about some other stuff I do, come on down to the West End Wine Bar. Uh, especially this July 6th, 7 and 9 at 450 West Franklin Street. Uh, we'll be showing comedy films every Wednesday. We'll be showing them from 7 to 9 until August 31st. So come on down and ask me yourself, and I'll tell you all you want to know and more. <laughs> Very cool. Kendra, uh, what you got coming up? Um, okay, well, I worked on two projects that I will be released in 2017 that I signed a lot of contracts, so I can't disclose of. Um, uh, so interview me in 2017, and then we'll talk about them. <laughs> and, um, then you can find me on IMDb at Kendra Staub, S-T-A-U-B as in boy. And um, I just finished an, uh, a horror uh, film that actually Katie and I both worked on, and she plays my best friend in it as well. Um, I sense a theme. Yeah, yeah. Her and I worked on a bunch of projects together, um, and that's kind of like how we, you know, we we wanted to have do something comedic because we never get cast in comedic roles out here. It's always horror films or romantic, romantic leads. So I, I was like, I wanted to do comedy. She wanted to do comedy and web series, so it, it worked perfect. Um, but yeah, it's a horror film, um, and we were we were both in that called The Malevolent, um, that filmed in the Greensboro. Um, Burlington and uh, Richmond, Virginia area, um, and and that I think the release date he's hoping will be Halloween of this year, so Halloween 2016. Okay. Um, but yeah, so yeah, just working on working on some projects and um, yeah. <laughs> 
Very nice. We'll have to keep an eye out for those. Yeah. Uh, and Karen, where can we find more of your work or catch up with you on social media? Um, you can find me, um, you can just Karen Felix on Facebook. I usually will post when I'm hitting an open mic around town. Um, don't really have any web pages or anything posted online. Just kind of keep it live so either you catch it or you don't. And then everything else is on a uh, made to order. Okay. Well, cool. Well, thank you guys for uh, for coming on the show. Did you have any parting thoughts, Conrad? I'm good. Sorry, it's Conrad. Put him on the spot. <laughs> Put me on the spot. <laughs> 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 we'll get him to do all his talking in the intro. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so thank you again for coming on. Um, if anybody wants to uh, contact the show, you know, send us an email, give us some feedback. That's localfilmtalk at gmail dot com. You can get us on Twitter at um, at localfilmtalk, and then of course the local film talk YouTube channel. You can subscribe there, or you can sc- subscribe to the local film talk uh, podcast on iTunes and get all our stuff that way. So that's uh, that's the end of the show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you, everybody, for coming on, and we'll see you guys next week. Y'all have a good one. Thank you. You too. Bye, everybody. Bye.